Hi guys, it's me, Elephants Are Tasty, but for the sake of this type of video, you can just call me Sunny. As you can tell from this title of the video, I am going to be talking to you today about my experience at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And I wanted to make this video because people are still watching my Week in My Life video, which I made last semester. I don't know, I thought it was a cool idea to do a Week in My Life to kind of have something to look back on for, for school, but then also maybe help people. And I think it has been helping people because I still get comments saying like, I've been thinking about RPI, this video was really nice, stuff like that, so I'm glad that video helped. I just wanted to make another one to try to help people more, and also college is just an interesting thing to talk about on YouTube, so I guess that's why I'm making this video. Just for some context for my experiences at RPI so far, I'll give some general information about myself and my studies, and then I will get into all the stuff I wanted to talk about. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's in science in biology with a minor in general psychology. My GPA, which I will state publicly in this video for the internet to hear, is a 3.59, and I'm actually pretty proud of that considering my first year of RPI was like pretty hard and kind of sucked a little bit, which I'll talk about later but yep my GPA is a 3.59 I don't know tell me it sucks tell me it's good whatever I don't really care I'm proud of it it's now summer break and I just finished my third full year at RPI um, so I just finished junior year but because I had a lot of transfer credits and stuff like that I have been considered a senior for a while and I actually only need one more class which is four credits to finish my undergraduate degree so essentially I am 98% done with my undergrad after three years at RPI and I'm currently waiting on a decision from RPI's what's it called grad department or whatever uh, for my application to the co-terminal master's program which would increase the time I have left at RPI if I'm accepted, but that's a whole nother video if I get accepted. I'm still waiting on a decision. It's taking way too long, but you know, whatever. Just a couple more notes before we really get started. I have no experience, like hands-on experience with the Summer Arch program, which uh, was made mandatory after my class year. So I will not be talking about it in this video. I will also not be talking about campus politics or anything in terms of the administration and any grievances the student body has with the current administration because these topics have not had a huge effect on my time personally at RPI. I know, for example, uh, people from Greek life, it's heavily affecting them in some ways, but for me personally, I have not been affected by any of the campus politics that's going on, so I feel like it's not in, it's not my place to really talk about these things, and also I don't have all the information. Um, if you want, you can go look at RPI's subreddit, but just if you do do that, please note that it's the internet, so people are going to be extra salty and extra emotional when they're ranting anonymously on the internet. In this video, I will divide everything I will be talking about into different areas, and in the description down below, I'll put different like timestamps, so if you don't want to watch through the whole video, you can skip to a part where I talk about something that might be more interesting to you. So what I'm going to be talking about during this video are my experiences with academics, research and extracurriculars, social life, mental health, dorm living at RPI, and the Troy area as a whole. Coming into RPI, I had a lot of AP and IB credits from high school, and I took in, I think if I remember correctly, 28 transfer credits into RPI. The maximum I believe they let you bring in is 32 credits, I brought in 28, and that was super helpful. I think it's part of the reason why I'm basically already done with my undergrad after only three years of being in college. So if you have the opportunity to bring in transfer credits to RPI or really to any school you're considering, I highly recommend it. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna save you and your family money, and basically, like, there's no reason not to do it unless you really don't remember anything from that class and you want to retake it. I'm about to go through all the classes I took based on freshman, sophomore, junior year. I might get some of the names of classes slightly wrong because I don't remember exactly what all they're called, but hopefully they just give you a good idea of what I actually took. First semester, freshman year, I took Intro to Cell Biology, General Chemistry 1, Calculus 1, and Art History. And the second semester, freshman year, I took General Psychology, Physics 1, General Chemistry 2, and Calculus 2. These are obviously a lot of prereqs for the other classes I really wanted to take. I'll talk more about it in a minute, but at this time, my major was Bioinformatics and Molecular Biology, so that's a lot of, um, obviously, Molecular Biology, Computational Biology, and a little bit of Computer Science. I'll talk about that more later, like I just said. But as for my professors uh, during this first 
freshman year. Uh, my professors for cell bio, art history, general psychology, and calculus too were funny, enjoyable, really nice people. Um, they made the boring parts of classes bearable. Um, they were fair graders. Their class also wasn't too hard or really too easy. If the class is too easy, then I'm the kind of person who does actually appreciate a challenge once in a while. None of those classes were like too easy or too boring or anything. But the other professors for the classes I didn't mention were, I guess, meh at best. I think they were the professors for general chemistry and physics one. Um, they spoke like those subjects were like the easiest subjects ever and obviously to a physics professor, yeah physics one is gonna be like the easiest thing ever but those were classes I really didn't enjoy. Like general chemistry and physics, those are some of the, like, the hardest subjects for me so I didn't enjoy those classes and I was struggling a little bit. Um, so when those professors were like, this is the easiest thing in the world and I didn't get it right away, it kind of made me dislike the professor a little bit more. And I would say freshman year was my hardest year at RPI so far, but I mean, I'm taking one class next semester, so is my hardest year at RPI. I guess another part of what made freshman year difficult is something that happens with everyone freshman year is you have to adjust from living at home, being in high school, to being on your own in college, at least for most people. Um, and just making sure that you keep yourself accountable because like your parents are there to make sure you're doing your homework. Like it's really all up to you. So I think I adjusted pretty well. Um, but I know a lot of people struggle with this, so just really adjusting to college life um, can be a struggle and it did add a bit of stress to my freshman year as well. I also didn't go to many office hours freshman year. I was doing fine in my classes, like I haven't failed a class at RPI at all, but I didn't go to office hours and I would recommend where, whichever college you go to, go to office hours if you're struggling a little bit. And everyone says this like freshman year I didn't go to enough office hours but then I discovered office hours and they helped me a lot. So definitely like listen to the people on YouTube <laughs> who have gone through this. Definitely go to office hours if, if you're struggling. It'll Especially freshman year when you are adjusting to everything, it'll really help I think. During this time my mental health started going downhill a little bit and it was not, it was partially due to what was happening in those classes and like me just hating the classes in general. Like I hated going to physics all the time. I just wanted to get out. I'll talk about my mental health um, a bit more in a minute, but while it was a bad combo, I was actually able to bring up my grades by the end of the semester. Um, for example, I was almost failing in physics one, college physics one, but then by the end of the semester, I was able to bring it up to a B plus. So if you're doing bad, it's not the end of the world. Just like keep working at it, go to office hours obviously, and if you actually fail a class whenever you're in college, it's not the end of the world. Like you can always retake a class. You can even retake a class that you pass just to improve your GPA. In general, freshman year was my hardest year at RPI, I would say. Next, obviously, is sophomore year. During this year, I took Organic Chemistry 1, Biostatistics, and Computer Science in the first semester. So that was only three classes compared to the usual four. And I only took three classes this semester because I knew Organic Chemistry was going to be super duper hard and also that I had no experience with computer science so I thought to myself I'll just take a lighter semester um, this time around and make up for it in later semesters just to help myself adjust to organic chemistry and computer science and it actually turned out helping a lot um, and then second semester sophomore year I took molecular biology 1, organic chemistry 2, personality psychology, forensic psychology, and human population. That's five classes counting organic chemistry 2. So I took three classes a semester before that and then made it up by taking five classes the next semester and I had actually done pretty well in organic chemistry 1. I got a B plus. I was actually really close to an A minus. I worked really hard. It's a whole lot of work to do organic chemistry at RPI but I don't know, I was able to survive and like I did sufficiently well and I was able to take like an extra class that semester. After I took personality psych and forensic psych, I realized I only needed to take one more class to get a psychology minor. So after that, I decided to add a psychology minor. In terms of professors sophomore year, I really enjoyed most of these professors, um, especially the professor for organic chemistry one and two. I had the same professor. They really made the class survivable and passable definitely. And honestly, probably more enjoyable than it might be at other schools depending on who the professor is. Um, I actually didn't hate organic chemistry, it was hard and it kicked my ass, but I didn't hate it. I don't know, it's weird. I hated general chemistry, but organic chemistry I guess because it had a little bit more relevance to what I enjoy. I think that's why I didn't hate it and that's why I don't think it was the devil, but I passed it. Both of them first try with B pluses and A minuses 
or an A in the lab portion. So like I was super duper <laughs> ecstatic about that. The professor for molecular biology one, which I took the second semester, it has actually since then been my favorite professor. I've gotten to take a couple more classes with them since then and they are my favorite professor at RPI. They're so helpful. I don't want to name names in this video because I don't know privacy reasons or something like that, but this professor who taught Molec Bio 1, uh, super nice, super helpful, great professor. I love them so much, honestly, favorite professor ever. The professors I like least were the professors in biostatistics and computer science. And for reference, in computer science 1 at RPI, they currently teach Python. So the biostatistics professor was fine, but not spectacular. And with CompSci, I also probably didn't like that professor a lot because I didn't like the class, kind of like with Gen Chem and Physics 1. Uh, but neither of these professors were bad. It was just kind of like the same thing, especially with CompSci, where they acted like it was the easiest thing in the world and then I was struggling. And I still didn't go to a lot of office hours. I went to a couple extra sessions to help out, which was good. If I don't like the class, I tend to not like the professor as well. So it's totally a personal thing. Um, you could hate the content of the class and like the professor who teaches it. I guess I'm just not that kind of person. Oh, and just real quick before I forget, because I just forgot a little bit. Physics 2, general physics 2, whatever, uh, at RPI is known to be super duper hard. I feel like they might be restructuring it or something, but when I was taking it, or I didn't take physics 2 at RPI. When I was going to take it, I heard horror stories about it at RPI, and as someone who hated physics, I was like, no, don't want to do this. So I got my last four transfer credits, because I, I had 28, the max is 32. I took physics 2 at Austin Community College here in Austin, Texas, and that saved my butt a lot. <laughs> I, didn't, I did not want to take physics 2 at RPI. It would have sucked, so I'm so glad I did that. I took it over uh, summer. The sophomore year was definitely getting easier, much easier than freshman year for me even with organic chemistry which I think is kind of strange but I enjoyed the content of the classes more and I was more willing to put time into the classes than I normally would you should always be diligent and like study for all your classes but I was also the type of person where if I was just done with physics for the day I could not stare at that textbook or do any more homework right then but when I get to a class where I actually enjoy the content or it's more relevant to what I actually want to do, I'm way more willing to put into the put in the work, and I actually sometimes even enjoy doing the work. Now we're on to junior year, the year I just finished, yay! This is a bit of an interesting story. Um, like I mentioned before, up until this point I was a bioinformatics and molecular biology major, and I had always known since the start of freshman year that this major also included the class data structures. Now, if you're in college and you've heard of data structures or you're a high school student who has heard college kids, like you've heard the whispers about data structures, it is not an easy class. And at RPI, that is no different. Data structures is probably one of, if not the most infamous class at RPI, I would say. If you're in data structures, you're spending anywhere between like 10 and 40 wheat 10 and 40 weeks, no. You're spending between 10 and like 40 hours on each homework every week, and there's a homework every week, and then you also have a lab every week. I'm skipping a bit ahead here, but at the very beginning of this past semester, the spring semester of my junior year, I was gonna give data structures a fair try. I had spent all of winter break learning C++, which is the data structures language, but then I just got there, and like the first week of data structures, I just realized I couldn't do it. In that one week, my mental health got really bad. I was having like anxiety issues over this class and I also didn't want it to ruin my GPA because I knew if I went through this with this class, it would ruin my GPA if I even managed to pass it. So at the very beginning of spring semester, so just a few months ago, I changed my major from bioinformatics and molecular biology to just biology. And it's super easy to change your major at RPI. You just need a form and a few signatures and just make sure you're, you know what classes you're going to be switching to and taking. But it was definitely a great decision for me. And I didn't have to take data structures, which was, yes, 100, thank you. But besides that, I get to take like all the same classes and they all count towards the biology major. So I basically didn't lose anything. The, the reason I have to take one more class this coming semester is because I changed my major. Bioinformatics had an extra class, a sophomore level class called Genetics and Evolution. It's a 2000 level class that uh, biology majors have to take, but bioinformatics majors didn't for some reason, so I never took it. So that, I'm taking a sophomore level class as my only class next semester. So there's that reason. I just hate data structures. I did not want to do it. Oh, I'm done talking about data structures. So the classes I took junior year, 
first semester was molecular biology 2 with my favorite professor industrial slash organizational psychology as to finish up my psychology minor uh, molecular biochemistry 1 and molecular biology lab uh, first semester and the lab was six credits so that's like super nice just to get more credits out of the way you know and then second semester I took well just now I just finished uh, molecular modeling genetic engineering also with my favorite professor <clears throat> microbiology and developmental biology so for these past two semesters I've loved every professor with the exception of the biochemistry one professor. Um, they never showed up to exams, and while I didn't have any personal experience with this, I heard a lot of other students say that the professor would just always direct students to the TA when the students came to ask the professor with help for the class. This professor is kind of the type that is just there to really do research, and they pretty much just focus on research, so they're not super invested in teaching, and it does kind of I guess hurt student morale when they don't want to help students or they don't even show up to exams. It just shows that they don't really care. So that's the one reason I didn't like this professor, but every other professor for junior year I really, really liked. This junior year was the easiest for me and my most fun year at RPI so far. Molecular biology lab in the fall semester was super time consuming and a lot of work, but I love being in a biology lab. I love the kind of stuff we were doing. So I actually had a lot of fun in that lab, even though it was super time consuming and like down to the wire working on projects to the very last day of the semester, but I actually had a lot of fun. Molecular modeling, which I just finished recently, may actually be my favorite class that I took at RPI. It was about digital software, obviously, to model proteins and molecules, I don't know, just on a computer, like 3D renderings, you can look at different properties of the molecules, it's actually a really fun class and I actually love um, molecular modeling now and it's part of what I want to do in the future for my career. I also really enjoyed microbiology in particular because we got to do a super fun project. We got to study how um, the gut bacteria that live in your intestines pretty much at all times, there's trillions of them all the time, um, how they can actually affect neurodegenerative diseases. So I got to write a 3000 word essay and do a presentation on how bacteria in your gut can actually influence the development of Alzheimer's disease. And yes, it's a research project and I had to like read a lot of papers and write a lot of words for it, but I love the topic and it was super interesting. So I had no problem with that. I was like, this is interesting. And like, I'm going to read my paper to my parents soon because they're interested in reading about it. So I get kind of nerdy um, about this stuff, as you can tell. But that about wraps it up for my academic experiences so far. So next, I'm going to speak briefly about my experience at RPI with research and extracurriculars. The first time I got research was fall semester sophomore year. So when I was starting out in organic chemistry, um, one of the professors who helped out with organic chemistry lab got me a position in an inorganic chemistry lab. And obviously it wasn't like pretty much relevant at all to what I want to do, but some experience in a lab is better than no experience in a lab. And there are some things that are um, applicable between both types of labs, like inorganic chemistry and biology. So it was better than nothing. I just worked uh, five hours a week, five, six hours a week on the projects I was doing there. Really not a big deal. Uh, we had weekly lab meetings, stuff like that. I just came in a few hours a week and did work, so it really wasn't a big deal. Then, this past junior year, for both the fall and spring semesters, I got a position in a freshwater ecology research lab, so not quite exactly what I wanted to do either, but certainly more relevant uh, than inorganic chemistry, at least it's biology. And I also do like water and aquatic organisms, so it was also an enjoyable topic. Basically what I did this whole year was a lot of data, uh, dealing with data instead of like little organisms from l lakes and ponds and things, which is actually nice because even though it was freshwater ecology instead of molecular biology, I was still dealing with data, which is really important for modern scientists. So um, I think a lot of what I did in this freshwater ecology lab will help me. For example, I used R, the uh, programming language, to do some stuff, and a lot of biologists use R for various things. So it totally wasn't a waste of time. Both of the two research labs I worked in, they gave me credits for research. Um, in organic chemistry, I got one credit, and both semesters for freshwater ecology, I got two credits for this. Um, I know you can also, if you're a full-time student, get paid 
uh, to do research, but you've got to work that out individually with a professor, and most professors just do research for credit. I wasn't able to get an internship the first or second summer breaks that I had, but this coming summer, actually I'm leaving in like less than two weeks now, I will be going to the University of Nevada in Las Vegas to do a REU, and if you're a college student you might know what an REU is, a research experience for undergraduates, they're super competitive programs to obviously get undergraduate research, and I got into a program this summer and I'm so excited, I'm going to be doing some actual relevant molecular biology research this summer I'm getting paid to do it and I'm so excited and I hope to make videos on that as well. That's about it for my experience with research, probably definitely a lot less intensive than maybe some other RPI students, but that's my personal experience. Obviously that's what this video is all about. In terms of extracurriculars, if you're just here watching this video because you know me and you watch my videos anyway, you know that I ride horses and that I've been on the equestrian team and you even saw some footage of that in my Week in My Life video where if you haven't seen that and you want to learn more about RPI, you can go watch that video on my channel. It's just a week in my life at RPI showing all those different things that go on in my schedule and stuff like that. So um, I've been on the RPI equestrian team for all three years now. We're not NCAA or anything like that. We compete in the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. I can't speak today, the IHSA. We ride a few times a week and sometimes we have shows on Saturdays. We get to get up at 4 a.m. That's super duper exciting. But I've had a lot of fun just because I love riding horses. I've done it since I was a kid and I definitely wanted to keep doing that in college. And I like showing even though I don't like the way the IHSA shows are done. Um, that's I'm not gonna complain about that right now because this probably doesn't apply to a lot of people. It's just, it's not the best thing in the world, but I wanted to do something with horses instead of nothing. So I've actually really enjoyed being on the RPI equestrian team. Also, if you're watching this video, check out the RPI equestrian team, please. We are super awesome and we want more people to join. We always want everyone from any type of riding background, even if you've never ridden on a horse, <laughs> Please uh, look at the RPI equestrian team if you're interested at all in something like that. And it's great exercise, definitely. Um, if I hadn't done equestrian team, I probably would have gained some weight. I actually haven't gained any weight in college, which is pretty nice. Um, but the equestrian team has been super fun. I just love horses. I love also getting off campus. Like if I wasn't on the equestrian team, I don't know when I would ever really get off campus at all. So it's been super fun. And um, I actually can't compete next semester because you have to be a full-time student to do so, but I do plan on at least taking some lessons and maybe I'll wake up early once or twice to go support my team. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but um, I love, I've loved doing the um, equestrian team at RPI and honestly that does take up a good chunk of my time. Um, so I actually didn't do a lot of any other clubs or organizations. I can't speak to all the different types of clubs RPI has, but I do know that they do have a whole lot of clubs. So if you are coming to RPI this coming fall or anything like that, we have a club activity fair at the beginning of the uh, fall semester, so definitely check that out. Pretty much just for extracurriculars, the only other things I ever did really, besides like hanging out with friends and stuff like that, is um, I also did extra working out besides horseback riding, so every student with your ID you get free access to uh, the gym on campus which is super nice so usually I worked out like twice three times a week maybe if I wasn't having a bad week this past semester uh, which I think I'll talk about in a minute I'm kind of reading off the little script here which is why I keep looking down probably um, but I started going to a couple of these dinner parties that are arranged by a club at RPI and they're just even people from the surrounding city they don't have to go to RPI we just all meet up and have a big dinner party I'll hang out and talk and it's super duper interesting and it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone socially um, so that was a super fun thing to do to also just like chill and talk to people and eat really good food so that's pretty much all I've done for extracurriculars um, which is probably <laughs> like super not impressive um, but you know it's been satisfactory to me so I can't complain <laughs> I know social lives and mental health are pretty big topics um, among students at RPI and people considering RPI, so I definitely wanted to include this section in the video. And just to kind of preface this section, um, I think I'm a pretty boring person comparatively because I've never been to a college party, definitely not one in RPI, so I don't know anything about those. 
Um, I'm also not affiliated with Greek life at all. I've never wanted to be in a sorority or anything like that, so I can't talk about that either. And like, I'm just pretty introverted and I prefer spending time with a few closer friends and like a lot of strangers or a lot of acquaintances at one time. So that's why like I've never gone to a party and like I, I had no interest in Greek life at all. So there's that. I just wanna go through a couple general things that have, I guess, been constant um, in terms of social having fun and my mental health uh, throughout all three years at RPI. So definitely I love sports and I go to a lot of RPI football and hockey games. Hockey is a big thing in the Northeast. And just to show you, this is a, I have a ticket collection and anything on here that's a red ticket is either an RPI hockey or football game. So I would say I go to a lot of RPI sports events. Hey, I went to uh, see an endgame. And our football team last year, or this past year, was actually super duper good. Um, we lost like two games in the whole season, counting playoffs. Our hockey team has not been very good the last few years since I've been there at all, but the games are always still fun. Um, we have a lot of cheers and the student section is always pretty rowdy and fun, so I love going to hockey games, even if we lose. Though it does make me a little sad, but like, what am I gonna do? Just like not go to the hockey game. Also, RPI has a student organization that plays movies in the big lecture hall on the weekends, uh, like Fridays and Saturdays and stuff like that for most of each semester. So I go to that a lot. They're pretty cheap tickets um, just to go see, like get out of my room, you know, and go see a movie on a big screen with other people and they have candy and stuff. So that's a pretty fun activity as well. I go to a lot of those movies and I haven't gone a lot, but Troy, downtown Troy has farmer's markets on Saturdays. I think it's Saturdays. I haven't gone in a while, but I know a lot of students like going to that, just like get downtown, like walk around and have a little fun. Now I'll kind of talk about my social slash mental health journey at RPI um, for freshman, sophomore and junior year. Freshman year. Uh, when you're an incoming freshman, you have the option to take NRB trips, which is Navigating Rensselaer and Beyond. They're just fun trips for freshmen where you get to meet people, you can do an overnight trip, stuff like that. They were good at helping me make friends, and obviously a lot of other people met friends there too, but I'm actually no longer really friends with anyone from that time. Um, I've kind of lost contact with all of them. That was mostly because I met my now ex-boyfriend and eventually I got together with him and his friends became my friends and I spent during freshman year I spent like almost all of my free time with them we loved playing video games together and just hanging out in people's dorm rooms for hours we got meals together etc etc and at the time those friends were good enough for me like I didn't really need anyone else um, so I didn't talk to many people except the occasional person um, in my classes or on the equestrian team and it was a pretty socially fulfilling time I would say and at some stressful points in the year especially when I was taking physics one I did need to visit the RPI counseling center um, a few times but I'll talk about that more in a minute so that's basically how my freshman year went um, socially so sophomore year I started having relationship issues um, which I've completely addressed in another video on my channel that's like it's not even about RPI, it's just about everything that happened, just to get it off my chest, you know. So, this year was the worst for my mental health, I would say. My boyfriend at the time, like, I don't want to get into it, I made another video, but my boyfriend at the time turned out to be, at the very least, borderline, borderline uh, manipulative and abusive. So, um, it was a bad and messy breakup, and there was just, like, a lot of BS that went down, you know. And to put it simply, I lost all of my friends um, by early spring semester, sophomore year, so for the rest of that semester I was pretty much all alone, which really sucked. Um, so I visited the counseling center a few more times, and I visited it a few times throughout freshman and sophomore year. Um, so the counseling center does get a bad reputation from many RPI students, and I am sure that for those students suffering from serious mental illnesses, trauma, etc., that the counseling center more often than not does not meet their needs fully. Um, but for my situation, I would say the counseling center was adequate, um, nothing more, nothing less, kind of. I was primarily there for like self-esteem issues, sometimes relationship issues, um, and the strategies to get me past them that were given to me by a counselor um, were decent, they helped a little bit, but I would say that most of my personal issues were solved um, by actions I took in my own life, like breaking up with my ex and stuff after that, and not really 
anything the counselor recommended to me. Like, what they recommended to me didn't hurt me, they helped a little bit, but most of the big changes um, that made me happy in my life were based on things I did by myself. The counseling center is fairly understaffed, actually, and it has a large number of people, of students requesting their services. So it is difficult to get appointments scheduled within one week, like if you really need to go, um, especially if you don't already go. And after your first meeting, unless you set another meeting in person, you currently have to use the phone to schedule an appointment, which I know is definitely difficult for some people who really need the counseling services. This past junior year, for the fall semester, which is when I made the Week in My Life video, uh, I basically had still no friends and I was living alone, um, which I'll talk about that more also in a minute. And I actually didn't have any issues with this for a while. Um, I did a variety of things to just entertain myself, like play video games, live stream on Twitch, watercolor painting, I went to the gym obviously, um, I went to movies, I uh, ride horses, etc, etc. And I was focused on work and research a lot of the time actually. By spring semester, aka the semester I just finished, I started feeling really sad and lonely about my situation. Um, I felt like I needed some closure with the friends I had lost and eventually I just got tired and annoyed of being sad and lonely all the time so I went look for ways to remedy the situation myself and I reconnected with a few of the old friends I had lost um, from the breakup with my ex-boyfriend and I got closure with them by discussing my side of the story that I had never really talked about and I actually do feel a whole lot better after having done that it's certainly taken a lot off my mind um, and I have actually regained a couple of those people as friends which is pretty nice I guess. I have a couple friends at school now, which is good. And as I previously mentioned, I went to a few of those dinner parties, which I was actually invited by one of the people who I regained as a friend. And it was a fun way to like go out of my comfort zone socially, but not also feel out of place, if that makes any sense. Um, I also made a friend, a close friend on the equestrian team because I was just kind of like friendly acquaintances with everyone really. Like I didn't super click with anyone on that team really, um, but I made a close friend with someone on the team and we've played a lot of video games together when I was lonely so that has helped a lot and by the end of this past semester my mental health had actually gotten so much better that I was a happy and satisfied person most of the time and once again I really feel like that came from actions that I personally took um, by my own initiative so I'm pretty proud of myself I would say um, so just overall even though I've had a bit of a rough time in terms of my social life at RPI social life and mental health um, I've still been able to have fun and spend time with people when I want to while also succeeding at my academics and research etc etc which is um, the part that makes me the most happy and satisfied with at my time at RPI like I don't look down on RPI for me having met my borderline manipulative and abusive ex-boyfriend so that's that part's fine really second to last topic is dorm living Woo! I don't know living in a dorm whatever you want to call it so freshman year I lived in a building called Bray Hall, which is on Freshman Hill, it's where most of the freshmen live. Um, it's really your basic college freshman dorm, nothing special at all. It's like a single large room for two people to share, so there's like two desks, two closets, two beds, etc. Um, and this hall had floor bathrooms, so everyone on that hall, that floor shared a bathroom basically. However, this dorm was super close to Commons Dining Hall, which is where most of the freshmen eat most of the time. So that was very convenient, especially when it's cold outside and I don't want to walk like five, ten minutes to go get food. And uh, Bray Hall was also about like a five to seven minute walk to the closest parts of academic campus. Um, so if you have a building that's like on the close side then it's like a five to seven minute walk from freshman hill but anywhere else it could be up to a 15 minute walk sophomore year i lived in the quad and these were kind of nicer dorms for i believe freshmen and sophomores maybe a couple juniors i think not sure i was in another double room this time similar like one large room for two people with a suited bathroom that connected us to another double so like us four had our own bathroom which was super nice but the quad is super duper close to sage dining hall and academic campus and the union so it's a super duper convenient location i really liked living there because especially if i'm getting up early for a class i don't want to walk far because i'm pretty 
lazy so the location was super convenient however probably the worst thing about living in quad is the year i was there there were early morning fire alarms like way too like early morning late night they were way too frequently like oh my god it got it was so annoying we had alarms like midnight 1 a.m 3 a.m 4 a.m like several times throughout both semesters and this was almost always due to someone not knowing how to cook food properly in a microwave like not unwrapping plastic off their food in the microwave like crap like that and it was just so annoying to wake up when you have an 8 a.m or 9 a.m class the alarm goes off at 4 a.m and everyone's outside miserable in their pajamas and say like oh maybe it's like 25 degrees outside in the winter like it sucks but there's like a lot of people living there, so something is bound to happen sometimes, but I just think it happened way too often. People need to learn how to cook food in a microwave. But anyway, junior year, this past year, obviously, I lived in a building called Brickwick. These are super nice dorms. Well, not super nice, but I'm not picky. So I call them nice dorms for, I think, singles and doubles. I don't think they have any triples. Um, I got to live alone, finally. I don't like living with roommates. I got to live in a studio or efficiency single. Um, with its own bathroom and kitchen furnishings like they gave us a full-size refrigerator and stuff like that So that was super nice. It is however one of the farthest dorms from campus If I'm walking from the building to campus, it's a 15 to 20 minute walk to the Union um, And like maybe an extra five to ten minutes uh, to the academic building I'm trying to get to and that's downhill if you're trying to walk from the Union to Brickwick That's uphill pretty much all the way which is super annoying and that's not super fun to walk in the winter So this past year I relied on the campus shuttles most of the time which I'll also talk about more in a minute I say that so many times when I'm making videos It's also a very quiet building like the people who live there live there because they really don't want to be disturbed um, It's great for getting work done but nobody there like really hangs out like nothing's ever happening so it's actually pretty isolating which I think is part of the reason I felt so isolated and also it doesn't have really any close food the closest dining hall is Bar H dining hall which is a short ride away on the shuttle but it's like a 10 maybe 15 minute walk from Brickwick to Bar H so if you miss the shuttle or there's no shuttle that day and you want to go eat food you're gonna be walking somewhere, unless you have a car. In general, um, the times I did live with roommates, which is freshman and sophomore year, I definitely like met them or at least talked to them online ahead of time. So we all figured out that like we were pretty introverted, quiet people. So I had decent um, roommate experiences. We just kind of like left each other alone really. And that, that was enough for me. Um, so no, I don't have any roommate horror stories really, or I'm not best friends or really friends at all with anyone who was my roommate. But then also one last thing, I guess, in terms of dorms is meal plans so all three years I was on a meal plan where they give you a certain amount of meal swipes per week and what they call flex dollars which is just extra dollars they give when you purchase your meal plan and you can buy stuff um, at the Union and other places that isn't just like a meal swipe and so that's pretty convenient and I know next year what I'm doing is I got the meal plan where you can convert all your swipes to just flex dollars and that's gonna be like the most convenient for me. I definitely value the flex dollars way more than the meal swipes because the meal swipes, like the dining halls, it's just like a basic dining hall. They're serviced by Sodexo. So it's really not great. Like, like I said before, I'm not picky. So I don't complain nearly as much as other students do about the food, but it's just basic college food. Like nothing great really. And like some days you just like, I don't want to eat any of this, but that's college life, you know? Our last topic is Troy and the surrounding area. Why am I talking like that? In regards to transportation, um, I've never had my own car on campus and freshmen aren't allowed to have cars on campus, but everyone else can. And just not having a car got super duper frustrating, especially when I was a junior year living up in Brickwick, um, because from Brickwick, it's at least like a 10 minute walk to any type of fast food or to the Union, 10, 15 minute walk, whatever to the Union. Um, so that was super annoying, especially in the winter where it's just cold and windy. And even if the roads are clean, like I just don't wanna be walking outside in the cold and wind. I would highly recommend like if you can, having a car on campus after freshman year or at least being good friends 
with someone who has a car and will be willing to give you rides. Like I mentioned before, they have campus shuttles. Um, they start at the Union and then there's two different routes that kind of loop around different parts of campus. And they're convenient for going just right around campus. These shuttles can be like inconsistent, late, not on schedule, etc. And sometimes I don't think they run when students need them the most. Like on weekends, they only run from, what is it, like 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And like if people are working, in the union like late into like saturday sunday night like and then they live all the way up in brickwick and they don't have a shuttle home that's pretty annoying but rpi has something else which is called rpi safe ride which is a super useful resource at least for me someone who doesn't like walking in the cold or the rain and it's students who are trained to like basically be like a free taxi service around RPI. Um, it starts at about 7 p.m. every day during the semester really and you can just call them up and ask them if ask them for a ride between two campus locations or just two locations within a certain service area you can see it on their website they do it for free like pretty much no questions asked so it's very useful when you're out on campus late studying like i usually am or when you've been out partying which i have never done also some of the like city bus lines i think they're the cdta ctda whatever bus lines um around troy they let you ride for free with your rpi id you just have to swipe it like a card or something like that or a ticket um, so that's super useful for people like me who don't have cars and actually there's a bus line that goes right through RPI campus that takes students directly up to Walmart and stores like that. So that's super convenient for me. Yeah, they have Uber and Lyft. That's super convenient for me when I need to go to the airport or I need to go to the train station. Um, so that's super duper nice if you don't have any other options for transportation, but obviously it's a company so you have to pay money for that and they're not super cheap, but in a pinch like uber or lyft is going to pick you up if you don't have any other ride next i want to talk about things to do around troy and rpi so there isn't actually a lot of things to do around troy in my experience troy i would say is actually a super boring town it's like not even a big city like it's a it's super boring in my experience um there's a big mall that's about 15 minute drive from campus that i really enjoy visiting i like going to malls for some reason there are a few movie theaters around etc etc but like there's not really a lot like there's shopping centers and stuff but like there's not enough like unique things to do so the capital albany albany whatever whatever <laughs> is a 20 minute drive about about 20 minute drive from campus and there are more things to do there like museums parks concerts uh theater live theater etc um but i haven't actually done much down there just because i also don't have a car um so i haven't done much down there besides go to a couple of concerts and events with friends who had cars there's also historic for horse racing saratoga springs up to the north what is it like maybe like a 40 minute drive about up there um it's actually like a super nice town and there's some stuff there to do and there's horse racing which i went to once and that was super fun but without a car or just a ride to any of these things you're gonna be like stuck on campus unless you want to pay extra to like get to these locations and overall like the place is just pretty boring but it kind of makes up for it because it's super pretty in the fall and the spring and like there's colors and flowers and stuff like that and most of your time will probably be spent on campus anyway especially in the first two years there so you don't have to go off campus a lot but definitely like this last year where i had like kind of less to do and i was super lonely it really got to me that i just couldn't get off of campus when i really needed to um without having to pay money to do that so that was a little bit annoying and regarding safety around troy troy is definitely not known as a safe city in fact parts of it are actually pretty dangerous for people um but from what i've heard and obviously experienced rpi um is gaining popularity so a lot of the parts of the city are improving just because i know a lot of the safety issues regarding troy have often encouraged parents not to send their kids to troy um so from what i've seen Troy's been getting better in terms of safety. I haven't experienced any like safety issues personally, but I also like don't get out much. So take that as you will. RPI also has a safety alert system, which alerts you of incidents on and around campus. But to be honest, the alerts come out like an hour, hour and a half, whatever, after the incidents happen. So 
if anything has actually happened that like might affect you, the alert system is kind of pointless because when the alerts are sent out, like there's no remnants of anything going on usually. Like there hasn't been anything super huge and bad on campus. So the alert system isn't exactly like super useful, I would say. From things I've experienced just in general um, going around town when I have, uh, I would definitely recommend not to travel into downtown Troy late at night, um, especially alone. Just always have someone with you, even if it's just one other person, traveling groups, it's just, like, do that in any city, really, like, it's just safety. But during the day, Troy is actually a pretty nice place, like, a lot of people love walking around downtown, going to shops and stuff like that. Just always be aware of your surroundings, really, that's really it. And then, the very last thing in this video, weather. And I, I'm only talking about this because it's affected me. Obviously, Troy is in New York, so you're going to get all four seasons up there. Um, but if you aren't on campus for the summer semester, chances are you'll get maybe maybe three weeks of really nice weather before you leave for summer break, and then maybe a month of really nice weather when you come back from summer break. Also, from mid-October until mid-April, the temperature is like unlikely to get above 65 degrees at all, and November to March is basically all winter as well so it rains and snows a lot actually and RPI campus is also very windy and the way some of the buildings are built it just amplifies the wind especially in the spring so someone like me who has long hair and I just don't have the best time walking around campus when it's windy like literally if my hair is like going all like this and my face is looking nasty and just stuff like that and the wind is blowing through my ears very loudly I get I don't know it stresses me out a little bit and I just hate the wind so it get it gets so windy on RPI campus sometimes that I now like hate the wind I hate being outside when it's windy just because it bothers me so much and also because it's in New York most RPI dorms don't have air conditioning in warmer weather like at the beginning of fall semester or the end of spring semester you'll need to open up some windows and have a fan or two going uh, because if you don't you'll be burning up in your room it'll be hard to sleep like I know um, it's been hard for me to sleep when my room is really hot at RPI um, but during the winter RPI has really good heating systems so you'll definitely be comfortable in the winter. Well, that about sums it up. Wow, this is probably gonna be a longer video than I expected. I just talk very verbosely, I think. That's part of the reason why. But thank you guys so much for watching if you've gotten to the end. I do plan on making more college videos because I know they really help people who are like looking for advice on the internet and stuff like that. So um, if you have any questions also about RPI, please leave them in the comment section. Um, if anyone actually watches this video and you have a lot of similar comments, I can make another video about RPI or, I don't know, I don't have much of a following, so I can't really do a Q&A video, especially regarding this small school, but just leave comments, I'll probably respond, um, cause I'm on the internet probably way too much. Um, yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. It just, it means a lot to me. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.